Hey everybody, welcome to today's training. Let's talk about node editing today. A lot of us that are coming into our software use the normal selection mode of the vectors where we're able to come in, select the vector, manipulate it by stretching it maybe in size, rotating it, uh, we're, we're removing the whole selected vector as a whole. Node editing is a really wonderful tool that's built into the software that allows you to go in and actually work on the individual nodes. We're going to look at what's involved with node editing and how it can help you build on your drawing. So, right here in regular selection mode we're used to has a little Microsoft cursor. When you select over here and you look over node editing, or again you've got a keyboard option of the shortcut as an N key, that cursor is going to switch and you'll see it looks more like a little stealth bomber. And now notice when I select one of these rectangles now, I no longer have the pink dashed line that we would have in the normal selection mode. What we have here now are the individual nodes or points that we see are now uh, able to be selected and manipulated. So I'm going to look into the basic of the node editing here first, and then after that we'll go into a couple applications and where you might use it in specific drawing files. So let's start going through some of the features of the node editing. R with just the simple seeing the cursor, we don't see a lot of options. They're not over here listed on our drawing tab. Where they are listed are the right mouse click. So if I hover over an exact point on your selected vector and I right click, you see some options that you have here. So this is a way of manipulating the individual nodes on your selected vector. So you can see some of the options here and we'll go through these as we continue drawing. And you'll see also these all have shortcut keys. So instead of right clicking and selecting these, I could hover over that node. You can see that it says a D right there. If I was to hover over that and just hit D on the keyboard, that would be a shortcut key to get rid of and delete that point. Uh, so that's if you hover over the actual points. If I hover over the right here of the span itself, not over a center point or not over a end point, just over the span, I get another set of options. And again, these here all have shortcut keys as well. So here, you know, you can see I switched to a Bezier curve where I could come into the, these hollow boxes and switch that line and make it more of it now something with a Bezier curve. You saw down here we got an arc. You come in here and manipulate that arc. And these are all arbitrary sizes. If you wanted to be able to snap individual points to dimensions, you could go into your uh, options up here and turn on your snap options and actually have your snap grid. And using the snap grid with these points, you're able to grab your different node points and they will snap to the node. So notice that, you know, again, arbitrarily here, you can play with that. Or again, if you had to make this to specific sizes where you're converting this to an arc and you wanted it certain certain amount of inches out, Again, my node editing is able to do the snap grid. Right, I want to go ahead. F4 would be the shortcut key for that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for this example. So just so you see that if you hover over the point and you right click, you have a set of options. And then if you hover over the span, you got to stay out of the middle or, over, or the end points. And then you get options here of whatever it might be in this uh, set of selection that you'd like to do. So let's pick these things back here to normal. And as you see here, with the node editing, it's going to keep that I switched that to a Bezier. Even though I've edit undo done that, I need to go one more and bring it back to where it just has that center point. And when I hover over that again, the center point, you got to be careful when you right click on that over versus right clicking on the span itself. Get a lot of people coming through here at the training, so I like to point that out as, hey, I'm trying to right click, I'm not getting my options. So look out for your endpoints, your center points. When you want to right click and alter the span, you got to be outside of those little boxes. Another thing we could do in the node editing, if I grab this corner, I wanted to make the square more of a trapezoid. When I bring it up and down, Without getting the uh, snap grid turned back on, it's going to be hard for me to get that same pull distance, both the top and the bottom. So what I can do is I can select the two points that I want to move by holding shift key down. i got those that have turned red. I can hit V for vertical stretch, and what it does is it proportionally 
does it both to the left and the right of that vertical. Same thing here, I select the two that I want by holding the shift key down. And now I hold the H down for horizontal and it brings it out horizontally in proportion. So that's holding either the V key down or the H key. And notice during those two examples, I only selected both the left and the right point, the two points that I wanted to move. There wasn't a big sweep select for a vector. If I would have done the sweep select of the whole bottom line, let me bring it back here. If I would have just clicked on this in node editing, did a sweep select, where not only am I getting the two points, but I'm also getting the center midpoint, and I've actually selected that entire vector. And now when I hit H or V, what it's going to do is it's going to bring this both nodes in the same direction. So if you highlight just the individual points, you'll be moving the points away from each other. And if you select the whole span, the whole span is what's going to move with you. So that's using the H and the V. And then by selecting the individual nodes or line with either a sweep select or by selecting the one that you want and holding the shift key down for multiple selections. Another key not to be forgotten on the keyboard for doing this, let me go back here, is the Alt key. If I hold the Alt key down, it's able to drag and keep whichever d w direction that you drag it completely lined up with the, uh, you can go over to points, but what it's doing is it's keeping it in that vertical or horizontal plane. So that's using the Alt key. Let's look at an application here where I might really use node editing. I'm just messing with these two boxes. So I'm going to delete those. I'm going to go up here to import. Sometimes you get these uh, photos that you're going to bring in and you need to vectorize them. So this is, you know, an image I got. It's not a very good resolution. Sometimes you're limited to the uh, what you can get for resolution. So if I just came in here did a quick trace, I'm not going to mess with uh, setting all the settings here. That's another training in the hole. So, <coughs> so if I went ahead here and looked, I just did a quick vector trace where I vector trace that image. This is where I'll spend a lot of time using node editing if it's not a very good uh, trace. So, first of all, here you can see all these little jagged edges. You know, first of all, there's the noise, or I can just sweep select that stuff and delete it. But little things like this, these little jagged edges, if it's going to show up here it's going to show up in the toolpath. So I need to get rid of a lot of this stuff. And this is where node, I find node editing to be very useful. I hit N, I switch to node. Got a lot of mess going on here. So what I can do is come over here, right click. Look, there's that insert a point, or I. So I could do the I. I could even have, instead of just hit I, I said, hey, I just want to cut it right there. And I want to right click and cut it right there. I'll select that span, hit delete to delete it. And then right here, I can get rid of all that mess. I right-click, close vector with a smooth curve. Bang. I, I'm starting to clean up some of that noise. So, again, this would take a while, especially look down here at this B. Oh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. This would really be a bad image. Uh, one, I would try to find a better image. Sometimes I might come in and just redraw the vectors right off the image itself. Or, again, if you got the node editing and this is the only option you have, heck, I can come in here and just... This is where it's really good to be good with your navigation skills. So I can cut the vector right there, come down and cut the vector down here, <coughs> and then just select that span and delete it. Gets rid of that, and then I could say, hey, right click, and then say, close that vector with a straight line. And then there's a perfectly straight line put across there. So note editing is r really useful. Uh, it could, I could sit here for a while and do this for this image to get this cleaned up. But again, like I said, I try to find a, a, a better uh, a better format of picture of cleaning it that's cleaner. But again, note editing just allows you to come in here. I can smooth these lines. Some of these are hard edges. I can go in and smooth them. I can go in and delete spans. I can clean them up. I can grab the Bezier ha or arc handles and manipulate them. So that's one example that I'd look at. This is another one where node editing is really important. So look at when we first probed this. We, If you remember back to the train, we had a really high resolution because we wanted to probe it quick. But notice that this didn't come out very uh, long. This didn't come out very round. Uh, if I select this and I go into the node editing, you can see all these little black points where every time the probe hit the side of the guitar by and recorded each of those points. And you can see here where we got some divots where that, you know, that natural curve wouldn't be in there. And this is where you would spend some time with the node editing. You can sweep select individual nodes. 
I can hit the S key, which is a right click for S. That's where we converted to a curve. You'll see that again as you play with selecting either the span to right click on or the point itself to click on and you get your smooth point. So this is where you'll spend a lot of node time note editing. I spent about 20 minutes in here using these using this probe example and then fine tuning it with the node editing. You can see that I cleaned it up by smooth points. Came in, made some hard points where I know I wanted 90 degree corners. You can see where I deleted that little uh, dip that was in there and then cleaned it up with the node editing. So these are just some node editing basics. A lot of people come through the two days here and we're just starting to learn you know, the regular selection mode and only a few of these uh, icons. But I've been finding a lot of people lately are getting into places where the node editing would save them a lot of headache and a lot of time. So just remember the node editing, um, you s when you switch into that mode, you're working on the individual points. There's a difference between right clicking on a span, the options that you get versus right clicking on an individual point. You got a lot of shortcut keys. Keep those in mind as you're going. Some people will even, you know, write these down or you can always go to help contents and the help contents at the very bottom. They've got a bunch of the shortcut keys already listed there for you. Maybe print that out and keep it next to you. But note editing is a wonderful feature that helps you do a lot of cleaning up and, and manipulating of your drawings that will help you down the road. So, hey, thanks again for everyone showing up today. It's been another great training. We'll see you all next time.